All right, then. We're live. We're live. Uh, welcome, every single buddy. How about you do the welcome this time, Adrian, while I look for the face, but go ahead, do the welcome. Well, good evening, everybody, to another edition of uh, Ref Reflect and Revive. Um, we're so glad you could join us here. Um, we are studying the book of Acts. We're on chapter 4. We didn't get to finish it last time. We should be, uh, I believe we left off on chapter 4, verse uh, 23. And we hope that all of you who are watching can participate with us. Please send us your prayer requests. Please send your comments. Any kind of participation is, is always encouraged, whether you're watching now or later uh, when we upload it to YouTube. We, we also take comments there, and, and hopefully a pastor can respond at a, at a timely manner if there are comments there. But we thank you for joining us, and let's go ahead and start with introductions. I'm the AV guy, Adrian. It's a lot more than that. He's kind of like the leader. What did you guys nah, say? Yeah, he's <laughs> I don't know. He, he's uh, the MC for the evening. Um, yeah, my name is Pastor <laughs> Quinones. I'm happy to be here as well. Maria Elena. We nice. haven't seen her in a while. It's been, it's been a long time, has it not? We're glad to have her back. <laughs> Welcome. And my name's David. Glad yeah. to be here. Let me see. Let me see who's on. Uh, we have Ken Blakely. He just recall, uh, God bl welcome everybody and God bless. Hey, man, Ken. good evening, Ken. Uh, I see Rosemary? your wife is on, um, um, Adrian, and then Aaliyah is on. Good to see you. Good evening, Becky. Good to see you guys. Hello, hello. Really excited. Um, other than that, what, any prayer requests that you guys might have uh, before we dive into Acts chapter 4? Um, I do. Mm -hmm. I have a prayer for a young man um, that's going through a real difficult time. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been sharing Jesus with him a little bit, but um, so I said, just lean on him. And he said, well, I send me a sign that he exists. Mm -hmm. So pray for him, please. Mm -hmm. um, I got something. Go for it. Um, uh, a praise first, really. Uh, my wife's uh, friend and co-worker, uh, grandparents were in, were in the hospital for COVID, but they were released Praise the Lord. Uh, home and uh, they're, they're recovering. But again, they need continued uh, prayer uh, to continue with the healing as they go on. So uh, praise there. Thank God for that. And also mm -hmm. I want to pray for a, a friend of mine, Manny. His uh, mother had passed away about a week or two ago. So I'm praying for uh, comfort and healing for him and his family and uh, for me and my wife as well we uh, have a little roof and rodent problem on top of the roof yeah. by the thing called pigeons <laughs> long story short I need them up other than that I honestly yes. think they're great pets you know no they're not <laughs> keep like a few in your it's room. like keeping apple products in there no, it's, just not, it's not gonna happen no <laughs> if any of you guys we have uh we have a few people online if you guys have any prayer requests how about you put them on the chat that way we could pray for them yes. um i want to pray for uh this new this new podcast that we are going to be starting up uh you'll be seeing it soon we'll be publicizing it but we just had a phenomenal meeting with a few of the key leaders so we are about to start a podcast here at the church and we'll be having some phenomenal guest speakers while we'll be going over some cool topics and you know the the concept the idea of unmasking you know it's it might like upset people a little bit like what are they talking about should i not wear a mask and the interesting is the interesting thing is it's like we've been wearing a mask even before covid and so it's like mm. What mask are we are we actually having to take off? So I want to pray for that ministry because I really will know that God is going to take that and use it like I've never seen it before. Um, oh, Leah Box, she says hello. Uh, Rosemary hello, says Leah. hello, everybody. Good evening, Rosemary. Right. And um, and so let us get down to it. David, could you start us off with the word of prayer, please? Sure. Shall we pray, Heavenly Father? We thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for your beautiful word. And thank you, Lord, for the beautiful gift of your son, Jesus. Father God, this evening as we are come together here to create another edition of this uh, podcast uh, service, we ask that your Holy Spirit will be present here to guide us in our discussion as we examine your word, as we open it. May you open it to our understanding. May you open our eyes that we may see great and wondrous things mm -hmm. out of your law. Bless us, we pray, and, and Lord, each of the requests that have been mentioned, and there may be others, Lord, in our, upon our hearts, we ask that you will hear those and answer each one in accordance with your will. Thank you, Father, for the privilege to serve you here today. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. Amen. So, uh, the last time we talked, we were doing chapter 4 in Acts. And John and Peter were what, guys? Arrested. 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 And so I feel like, even before we start reading, Albert. Albert says, hello. Good to see you, Albert. Albert, yeah. I, I thought you were going to come to the church and join us. He texted me. He texted me. He's like, what time's uh, uh, Reflect and Revive? I was like, 7. I was like, I hope he actually came because I would love for you. Albert, next time, the seat, my seat, all these seats are open if you want to come and share Absolutely. with us. Absolutely. Love to have you. Um, and uh, I want to ask you guys, have you been, have you ever been through some challenging times in your life? <laughs> <laughs> Take a deep breath. For those who are watching, have you ever been through some challenging times in your life? And you, all you have to do is write yes or no. And I know that you are capable of writing yes and no in the comments. So please, have you ever been <laughs> through some challenging... What about you guys here? Have you ever been through some challenging times in your life? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, indeed. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah? Now, here's my next question. Did those challenging times lead you into a closet space or a private, or private place to just pray and ask for boldness from God? Or did those challenging times lead you to a place of discouragement? Both. Both? Probably I've, both. I've been in Maybe both ways, yeah. Yeah? Tell me, tell me, let's talk about first the time that it led you to a time of discouragement rather than a time of fasting and praying. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. Tell me about that. You don't have to be explicit. You don't have to share me details. But I want to hear about... I have I have Lori Humble saying, yep. And then Albert saying, yes. And Lisa saying, yes. All these people are saying, yes. Uh, oh, and we have here Diana just got out of the hospital from COVID-19. Amazing. Yes. Amazing. That's awesome, Amazing. Diana. We're really... Praise, praise God. We're at your home, oh, Diana. We're happy you're home. And thank you for joining us and watching us. That's really awesome. Amen. And we're going to continue to pray for you because we know like how you're... Your grandparents, you were saying? What were you saying? Wait, who? Uh, my uh, friends, my wife's, Becky's uh, friends. Uh, friends. Friends. Friends and grandparents yeah. were released. We were praying for you. But let's talk about, talk about for me for a second. Like, how did that work out when it led you to a place of discouragement in your life rather than a place of prayer and fasting? I, I know for me personally, I, I mean, there's been a number of experiences that led me that many, many times, especially when I was a younger man. But... Ultimately, though, those those moments of discouragement didn't lead me to any place better. Mm. If anything, it led me to sin upon sin, discouragement, discouragement. When I thought I could pick myself up on my own, it may have seemed like it, but I'd always get knocked down. Mm. But it would never. It, it, it was never anything. It didn't lead me to anything satisfying. Mm. It always left me wanting more and realizing that um wh wh where i'm going with this it's just it's just eating away more and more at me mm. uh, it's kind of interesting how your wife said the same thing made things harder yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> she i i think that's from your experience and from your testament as you're saying what about you guys what do you guys think i agree with adrian um and i think it's uh, and I wish I could break the pattern, but uh, to me, it's like every time I have something difficult that happens in my life, um, that my first instinct is to be discouraged. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing that goes through my mind, you know? I don't want to do this, I don't want to do that. I, you know, it's just, uh, I'm so in turmoil. And then always, just like clockwork, Joshua 1 9 pops in my hand. Have I not commanded you to be strong and of good courage? Do not be dismayed. And so that kind of jolts me back into, it's like having your, and I really mean that, it's like having yeah. your heart stopped and pounded on. Um, when I think of that, then I remember that I have a God that is bigger than my problem, mm -hmm. always. I, I, and I, I truly have to say the same thing, you know, whether it be arguments with different individuals or whether it just be like God not answering a prayer or it feels like my prayers are just bouncing off the ceiling and coming right back to me. You know, in these times of despair and loneliness, it's really hard for me to like, to then say, okay, you know what I need to do right now? I need to pray. 
I need to just pray. And we got Harris. He just came in our our uh, our video man, so he's gonna help us out. We're gonna give him the camera real quick. Go ahead, Harris. Do your thing, man. Yeah. yeah cool, man. But it, it is extremely difficult for me to find a closet and to begin to pray when things are so hard. Mm -hmm. Things are so difficult. And I like I like how I like how most of us can relate. Your wife says yes, needed to hear that. Absolutely, girl, I needed to hear that every day. <laughs> Joshua one nine. But sometimes those those scriptures don't pop into my mind. I have to be completely honest, even though I, I frequently try to read my Bible. But the reason why I ask is because we just found out that Peter and jo Peter and John were what again? Arrested. And and they threatened them. And if we read in verse twenty one, let's go to chapter four, verse twenty one, uh, because I wanted to give us some background to this. Uh, so chapter four, verse twenty one. After threatening them further, they released them. They found no way to punish them because the people were all giving glory to God over what had been done. For this sign of the healing had been performed on a man of forty years. And, and yes, they were able to leave and they were able to like, they were able to, to, to leave and not be killed or not be murdered or martyred, however you want to describe it. But at the same time, it must have been discouraging. They're preaching to people. They're trying to lift the name of Christ and God is good. But yeah, it, it was discouraging. But let's continue. What happens within the story? And that's what I really wanted to focus on in the next few verses. So let's begin reading and let's begin discussing the steps that Peter and John and the rest of the disciples and the rest of the multitude took after such a discouraging moment that should have led them to a place of despair, but in reality it led them somewhere else. So we're in chapter 4, verse 23. Adrian, start us off and we'll just continue with this discussion. Let's do this. And being let go, they went to their own companions and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. So when they heard that, they raised their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, you are God. You made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them. Stop there, bro. That's where it's at. Now I have a question. That specific phrase comes from a specific commandment. What commandment does that phrase come from? Made the heavens and the earth. It's a specific commandment. Where does it come from? See and all that is in them. I'll give you the answers with number four in, in, in the Ten Commandments. It deals, it deals remember with the Sabbath. Remember, remember the, the Sabbath. Sabbath. Keep it holy. And six days, you do all your created. labor. Mm -hmm. And God created what? The heavens yeah, and the earth. And the earth. earth. Yes, right? Yeah. Why does God ask us to keep the Sabbath? Why does that God ask us to keep the Sabbath? What is one of the reasons why God asks it? There's multiple reasons why God asks mm -hmm. it, but what is one of the reasons why God asks us to keep the Sabbath? Mind says that he's the author of everything. He created everything. He created everything. He's the author of everything. And your wife said four question mark. You were right. You were right, Becky. You were right. And Ked said four. Rosemary said four. Absolutely. You guys are absolutely right. The fourth commandment. If you actually want to go to your Bibles, it's in Exodus chapter 20. You can find it for yourself, but we're going to keep discussing it. But, David, you said that what again? Can you say that a little bit louder for everyone to hear? It's a reminder that he has created all things, including each of us. Mm. Amen. And notice that's a, that's, the, that's a similar phrase that they use. The heavens of earth and the sea and everything in them. Mm. You created it, God. And so when God asks us to keep the Sabbath, what is he also, in a sense, telling us to do? What do you guys think? When we keep the Sabbath, what is something we're supposed to keep in the forefront of our minds as we keep the Sabbath? Well, not only the creation, but also that's the time he set apart so we could spend time with him mm. and study on him, uh, commune uh, with our fellow brethren, mm. you know, again, to learn from each other, to, to praise God, to pray, Amen. to come together. And again, just just have that time to put away all the earthly things just to be able to come together in, in, in unison, exactly. as we, we will see later on in this chapter, how all the apostles the disciples come together and it's like when it's like it's like god when we remember who god is and how powerful he is notice how that gives us strength as well mm. that's the first like how you say joshua what one nine right mm -hmm. comes into your mind and they they decided to what bring to their mind was truly that the god is creator of heaven and earth and the reason why I really like this is because for me, it's like, I don't know about you guys, but when I remember who God really is, I remember how small my problems are. Yeah. You know? Have you ever heard that talk? Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. You know? 
Um, let's see what Lori Campbell says. Um, Rosemary says, spend time with our Lord. And Lori Humble says, to remember that he loves us and created us. Absolutely. Amen. You know? So in the discouraging moments, um, why is it important to remember that God is creator of heaven and earth and everything that is in him? Why do you guys think that? Say the question again. Why is it important, important in times of discouragement to remember that God is creator of heaven and earth? Because nothing is as important to even us as humans as something that we create. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, for me, my children are like my greatest accomplishment. Mm -hmm. No matter what I, else I accomplish, my kids are like my crowning glory. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think about um, Jesus, you know, about God. Um, the covenant, the promise, the, the pact between him and us is because he created it. No one can hurt as much as God does when we're suffering. Mm -hmm. And so he, he, he gave us this so that we could remember. He not only created the world, he created me. He created each one of us. So that's how special we are to him. That he, he made this pact, this covenant, this promise mm -hmm. out of the Sabbath for each one of us. And so I think that, you know, the, the apostles surely in the New Testament, they, they, they valued that it was important. The Sabbath was important to them. Mm -hmm. When they saw Jesus keep it, the Sabbath was a reminder to them that um, that they were special. Mm -hmm. They were special, and I think we need to remember today that we're special mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. He created us. Mm -hmm. He created us, and He sustains us. Mm -hmm. He didn't mm -hmm. even stop there. He just keeps on protecting us. Mm -hmm. What about the rest of you guys? You know, in times of discouragement, why is it important to remember who God really is? Well, I have a text here that jumped in my mind as soon as Marilyn talked about that. It's Jeremiah chapter 32 and verse 17. And then again, it repeats in verse 27. It's this whole chapter. But it says here, Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power and by thine outstretched arm. Nothing is too difficult for thee. Mm, like so that. if I read that, and if God's the one that created everything, and nothing's too difficult for him, then whatever my problem is, no matter how big or small or mm. what, yeah. my creator, my God, he can handle it. Mm. And I need to let him have it, let him take control of it. Oh, man. I think, uh, um, let me see. Uh, Ken said, all-powerful. And, mm. and like mm. you were saying, if my God is all powerful, whom can stand? Who can stand against me? God before us. Who can be against us? Right? Yeah. And your wife said we need God's love. I mean, when you are going through hell and back, you know, do you need someone to come to you and say you did this wrong, you did this wrong, you did this wrong, or do you need someone who's compassionate and loving and kind to just be there next to you and just say, hey, I know you made a mistake. But I'm still here and I want to just shower my love over you so that we can heal together, you know. Amen. We need his love, you know. Oh, yeah. And and could could this situation of being arrested and, and, and probably, I mean, they were thrown in jail. Could that have been something super discouraging that could have led the disciples, the apostles, forgive me, the apostles to just, you know, this, this mission God has for me, it's just way too hard. There's going to be too many things coming up. Man, I'm not ready for this. Like, I need to just leave. Could that have, that had been the result for this? Mm -hmm. well, Absolutely. The, it's, it's too powerful. Mm -hmm. His word is too powerful. And then, and I, you know, you and I talked earlier. We talk, we're talking about this podcast and I was telling you my issue with my roof and all that. <laughs> and the bird problem that we have. And my wife will, she, she, she'll attest to this, but... And I almost didn't want to come tonight because I was very discouraged. I was mad. But again, I thought all of the earthly things to myself. I, I didn't think of after a while. I was like, you know what? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Slow down a sec. Take a deep breath. Mm -hmm. Who's in charge? Who do I go to? I can't fix this by myself, right? And I realized, nah, doing doing what we do here on Wednesdays is too too important. Doing the podcast if we want to plan is too important. Mm -hmm. So I can't mm -hmm. let other things you know get in the way of, of what's truly important that's delivering god's message to everybody will satan send things your way to discourage absolutely. you yeah. Yeah. absolutely absolutely yeah. <laughs> absolutely oh, yeah. you know you ask what that discourages well 
I've never been arrested, and I <laughs> pray that I never am. Milo, she's never been arrested? <laughs> oh, yeah. she, he said Ooh. twice. I don't know. Milo says twice. <laughs> <laughs> Don't believe anything he says. <laughs> I know you don't. <laughs> but, you know, just having that freedom <laughs> taken, <laughs> just having that freedom taken away from me, you know, just thinking of being, you know, put away somewhere where I can't do anything unless my captors or, or whoever allows me that, mm -hmm. you know. That would be so discouraging. But to have someone arrest you because you're doing what the Lord has commanded you to do. Yeah. You know, that would be so discouraging and so fearful to me. Mm -hmm. And Adrian, you were mentioning, you know, um, your roof problem. And you finally mm -hmm. decided it wasn't anything big. But I think especially in, the, in this... Uh, environment we're living in today yeah. mm -hmm. it's important to to recognize that because any little thing at this moment particularly can discourage us completely mm -hmm. because it may not be a big thing for me yeah. may not be a big thing for pastor but it is a big thing for you mm -hmm. so no matter how little something does and, and that's what we tend to do as human beings we mm -hmm. tend to compare and minimize. Uh, well, sweet. I went through something worse than you. Mm -hmm. So let me tell you about my worst situation. Mm -hmm. And, and it, for me, I always go back to that too. And I was like, you know what? I don't have it bad. Despite all these problems, I don't have it bad. I always I always have that. Like there's someone out there that's going through much worse than this. This is just a petty problem that can be handled at some mm -hmm. point. I just, just got to get it out of my head and move forward. But the thing is that Satan can use any little thing oh, yeah. yep. to no discourage order. us. Any little thing. Yeah. So we have to be, you know, and it's easier said than done to oh, be yes. grounded. Because they accepted the work that the Lord had given them. They accepted it. Yes. And yes. they went about doing it. Okay, but I wonder if they didn't have fears. I would. I would have. Yeah. I, I you know, to have the Savior walking alongside me. And saying, "Come on, let's go over. Let's go heal somebody today. Come follow me. Yeah, follow, follow me. me. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, he's not there anymore. But he said, "Continue doing what you were doing with me." Mm -hmm. So, how fearful was that for them? So you know, we just and I know that they trusted him. And he said, "I'm going to send you a helper." Mm -hmm. I know that they trusted that, but still, they were on their own, and yeah. it had to have been fearful. Mm -hmm. So for us, you know, whatever little things. Um, Satan uses to attempt to destroy us. Mm -hmm. We have to recognize that, and we have to um, just remember to hold on to His hand all the time. Mm -hmm. Not today, Satan. Remember who's exactly. God. Exactly, right. and remember who's God. <laughs> like, exactly. What was that text one more time that you just you said? Here? Yeah, what is it? Could you read Jeremiah it thirty-two, read verse seventeen. Ah, Lord God, behold, Thou hast made the heavens and the earth by Thy great power and by Thine outstretched arm. Mm. exclamation point on all those nothing is too difficult for thee and this is kind of the next point because <laughs> I mean I look at this text and I read it and I was like this is a sermon this is legit a three point sermon I see a three point sermon within these things and we're all getting preached to right now because the next part that they do is they quote what what is the next thing they do they they get together and, and despite the discouragement they go and they come together one accord and they begin to what they first it starts with a P they begin to what Praise. Pray, praise. Praise and pray. Praise and pray. Mm -hmm. Immediately. They remind themselves who's God. And then when they see that other discouragement, then they begin to quote what? Scripture. Mm -hmm. and Psalms 2, chapter Psalms. 1. This is Psalms it. Chapter 2, verse 1. Um, I'm going to read the next two verses, and then we'll continue mm -hmm. on. But this is an important concept, and I think David, more than anybody, agrees with this, about reciting, reminding, I mean, rememorizing Scripture and holding it at the forefront. When you felt discouragement, immediately what pops in your mind? Joshua 1 9. And we'll be able to, we'll, we'll get into it. Let's read it first. We're in, if you just tuned in, we're in Acts chapter 4, and we're going in verse 24. Here we go. Uh, 25. 25. You said through the Holy Spirit, notice they're quoting scripture and holding on to God's promises. Mm -hmm. By the mouth of our father David, your servant, why do Gentiles rage and the people plot futile things? Futile things. The kings of the earth take their stand and the rulers assemble together against the Lord and against his Messiah. 
For in fact, in this city, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, assembled together against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed to do whatever your hand and will had predestined to take place. And now, Lord, consider their threats and grant that your servants may speak your word with all boldness. Mm. Mm. So after they could begin to pray, their prayer leads them to hold on, hold fast to the promises of who? God. That's it. So David, talk to me a little about memorizing scripture and how that has helped your life and your spirituality and just your journey with Christ. How has, how has memorizing scripture helped you? Well, I think I go back to what Marie Lena said, that, you know, when she was going through that pretty difficult time, that text just came to her that she had read, I'm sure, had several times before, and it just... It, it fit the moment, the occasion, and the need. Mm. And, you know, she recited that voice. And, and after she recited it, and I'm sure she, you know, examined everything that was said in that, I don't need to be afraid. I don't need to be discouraged. Has not God commanded me, mm. you know, to trust him, to trust him completely. The Lord, that will keep him in perfect peace. His mind is stayed on thee because mm. he trusts us in thee, right? Mm. Isaiah 26, 3. Trust ye the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Mm -hmm. Verse 4. So, you know, it's when you, when you search the scriptures in them, we believe what? That we have what? Life. life. Eternal life, right? Mm -hmm. And they are they which testify of him. Jesus. This entire book testifies of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen? So his word, he is the living word, mm -hmm. right? And so the living word is then transferred to you and me, and we each become living words, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Because by you know, our, te our testimony... We can only testify of what we have seen oh, no, and heard, no. right? We've seen scriptures. We've seen what the scriptures does. We've seen Mar what Marlena got encouraged by remembering that verse. And it just helped her to get through that difficult time. Mm -hmm. I I'm going to take you, I'll give you, take you back 25 years Go ahead. when I first came here. Go ahead. Marlena's heard my story, but I'm, just for the sake Go of ahead. everybody else yeah, here. Yeah. All right. I came here to El Paso to start my life over. I had just lost my wife to cancer. She's only 38 years of old. 38 years old when she when she died and I came in here with my two daughters seven and ten years of age to start my life over I had met somebody when I came here to visit my brother and I thought we were going to start a whole new life together well it just seemed like problems sprang up and came over and over and over and finally we decided to we got married but then we decided to annul the marriage after for three months mm. Mm. and so we moved out of the house we moved in an apartment my daughters and I and one night there when I had time to think about it, my, my kids had already gone to bed we prayed and they, they went to bed and I remained there in my room and I just got down on my knees and I cried out to the Lord I just cried to God I said I didn't know what to do I didn't know what to do I, you know my, my sister had called me and offered to drive all the way out here with their husband's truck and van to move us and take us all the way back and let us live in Florida with them until we could get resituated and I, I just didn't know what to do. And so I prayed, and I prayed, and I said, Lord, what do I do? Do I stay here? Do I accept my, my sister's offer and, and just pack up and leave and just forget about all this? And I must have kneeled there for at least 15, 20 minutes after I said that. I didn't say a word, and all I did was just listen, going back to what you had, mm -hmm. Pastor, mentioned about doing like 15 minutes ago. Well, just, just about a 20 minute point, and it was probably two o'clock in the morning. Hmm. And it was just, it was like, I guess it's a still small voice. That's what it is. Well, it wasn't an audible voice, but it was just the biggest strong impression. And all it said, all it was was two words. Stay here. Mm -hmm. That's all it was. So I went to bed. I said, okay, Lord, I'm just, you know, all right, I'm going to bed. And give me some rest and just we'll decide tomorrow what we're going to do. Yeah. So anyway, we remained there at that apartment. And a couple days later... I got a call from Region 19. They said they have a program for, it's called, um, um, you probably heard of it, Adrian. Alternative Certification. Alternative certification. I didn't know anything about that. You know, I had inquired about maybe doing some teaching or whatever here and see so what I had to do to get that. So they called me back and they said, we have an opportunity for you. If you'd like to come, you can sign up for the program and you can get a chance to be hired by any of the school districts. And make a long story short, I got hired and that's where my teaching career began. Mm -hmm. And that's why I hear 25 years later. Wow. So just relying and listening for the voice of God. Yeah. And, and, and you can imagine how discouraged I was. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but when you find your place, oh my gosh, and yeah. the thing, and the thing, what I, I really like about what you just said is, is that is that you not only were you searching scriptures, you know, and in them they testify of Jesus Christ, yes. but at the same time God can speak to us too. Yeah. Yes. He can do. He can yeah. speak to us not only through His Word. Yeah. But through nature, through relationships, yeah. through through so many different avenues, God is just trying to speak to us. He's He's desperately trying to speak to us. And and I think. Well, sorry. I no. Go. 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 One, one important thing I think you mentioned, David, is that you just listened. Mm. Sometimes in prayer, we we're the ones speaking. We're so right. we're Sometimes we do. You don't take, sure we take the time to pause and just listen. Mm. You've got and to and allow to things to sink in, and I think that's very powerful. And notice when you listen, if you we've read the text, when you listen, you understand the authority that you do have mm -hmm. because Christ is given. When you truly comprehend and understand, my God is the creator of heaven and the earth. And I'm and I'm I've sat and I've meditated on this. And if he is the creator, if he is Alpha and Omega, therefore what I'm about to ask is nothing of God. God, I want you to give me the strength to proclaim your name boldly. And I know because of your ministry, because of who you are, this is what you want me to do, because I've listened. And they've asked uh, they've asked requests that they know God will answer because they have understood his character because they've taken time to read his word to comprehend his word to listen to his statues his attributes his character mm. and now they begin to preach Miss Knight, were you going to say something in Exodus 14 14 mm. 13 and 14 it's the Lord says stand still mm. Mm. stand still be and still. listen be still and he's talking to the uh, Israelites yeah to the, his people his children and he says, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it doesn't mean, I, I don't think it means not to say anything, not to open your mouth. But instead of in those moments when we're mm -hmm. so overcome with anxiety mm -hmm. and, and, and doubt in the unknown, what do we tend to do? What is the first thing we tend to do? Complain. We complain. We, complain. Complain. we cry. We withdraw. And then when we're not doing those things, we jump into action. Oh, without the blessing of God. Without <laughs> his leading. Mm -hmm. And so we try to fix the problem. And we try to go here and we try to do this and do that. And we make a bigger tangle out of things. Mm -hmm. So he says, he's telling the children of Israel, just be quiet and listen to me. Just stand still. Don't be so overcome with emotion. Stand still. Remember that I am your Savior. Mm, that's right. And this is what the apostles and the family of God do at this time. They have been threatened. They have been arrested. I mean, I mean, <laughs> we're about to find out someone's about to get killed very soon. <laughs> Just two chapters later. It's getting worse and worse and worse. Yet despite the persecution they're facing, despite the disappointment they're going through, despite the dark times that they are seeing, instead of jumping in, like you were saying, and taking action, instead of... Instead of getting so discouraged and quitting, they find a place where they can come together and pray. And if you haven't known, we come together here at 7 o'clock on Fridays to just pray, just to let you know. FYI, prayer meeting, 7 o'clock. <laughs> little advertisement, there you go, just for you. But they come and pray, they recite scripture, and they hold fast to the promises that the Holy Spirit has given them. And then, this is my favorite part, they wait for God to move. Let's continue reading. Miss Knight, how about you read for us... Um, 31. This is where the story gets good. Go and ahead. I just want to point something out. Go we'll ahead. Something that preach just, it, preach just it. popped preach out to me. In verse 13, when you go back to verse 13, mm -hmm. it says, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, mm -hmm. they marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus. Mm -hmm. So as we started today's um, study, it says, And they raised their voices to God. That means that they were more than likely praying out loud, mm -hmm. yep. you know, yep. and so not only were they reminding themselves that God, their God was their creator and their savior as well. They were acknowledging it so that anyone listening could hear that. Mm -hmm. So I wonder, and sometimes when I'm so overwrought with emotion and with fear and so many other things, I wonder how many times I, I, I show people something other than Jesus's love My mm. gosh. and his care yeah. and Help his us. protection forgive me man. Mm. yes mm. me as well me as well all right okay so 31 you yes. said yes ma'am okay 
And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. And I think that's that's it. Right there. So there are there are there are some key aspects that I feel like we need to hold fast to. We need to remember who God is. We need to remember who He is. And that's one of the reasons why He gives the Sabbath. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. You know? Remember remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For in six days, you know, God created the heavens and the earth, but on the seventh day the God sanctified it and made it holy. And, and, and the reason why we need to remember the seventh day, the reason we need to remember who God is, is because remembering his character, remembering his attributes, remembering his power, his, his steadfast love will give us strength to endure the problems that we will face in this life. And after we remember, it shouldn't lead us, it's not going to lead us into a place of despair, even though God can handle, God can handle our problems and God can handle... You know, he, I mean, you read in Psalms, there are places in Psalms where David cries out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That comes from Psalm, and Jesus recites and it. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you have to be perfect and you have to be like, Oh, everything's fine. No, no, no. Be honest with God. But the thing is, we pray to God. It's not we're praying to ourselves or we're crying. No, pray. Take those feelings you have and bring them to the foot of the cross and say, God, I'm having an issue. Pray. But after you pray, I promise you something about it. It's like as you begin to pray, as you begin mm -hmm. to remember, it's interesting, is that then those those prayers of, of, of desolation, of depression, uh, it's interesting. They end up will they will end up like a doxology. They turn out to be praise. Yep. A praise. Doxa. Doxa praise. Just like just like the Psalms does. Well, it's the same thing with Job. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was a kid, um, I was always taught that Job never never grumbled, so to speak. And that's absolutely Patience not true. <laughs> that is absolutely not true. What does he say? I wish I had never been born. Mm -hmm. You know, that's pretty strong. Mm -hmm. yeah. He said, I wish I had never been strong. A lot of people feel that way. But then at the end, what does he say? Don't he says, slingy. I know, I know that you live and that you, you are there, you're present. I had, my ears had heard of you. My eyes um, have now seen you. He says, so even though he grumbled and that and we're normal, we're human beings and Jesus shared the same emotions and fears mm -hmm. and everything else. But when we grab onto our father's hand, mm -hmm. we can be victorious, even mm -hmm. though we grumble, even mm -hmm. though we're afraid, mm -hmm. you know, and that's when his praise comes in. That's when when we do those things, though, that's when other people can say, oh, I want to endure problems just like they did, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. but. And this is this is where it gets. I like how Ken says this. He says this. Um, oh, first of all, Rosemary says pink looks good on you. That's what Rosemary said first. <laughs> um, second thing, we receive a special blessing on that day. I can attest to so speaking to the Sabbath. And finally, Ken Ken says also pray, and the Holy Spirit kicks in to help. And I feel like right when we're at the end of our line, sometimes God waits to the end. Sometimes God waits when you still have energy. I God 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 decides what He wants to do. His timing is perfect though. So. But God will always come through. Because if he's yeah. for you, who can stand against you? And notice that God came through and guess what descended like and, and shake and shaking the building. And mm -hmm. it was the Holy Spirit that came and that is what gave them the boldness to accomplish the mission God had, done, had called them to do. It wasn't through their own strength, it wasn't through their own mind, it wasn't through their own wisdom, but it was by the power of the Holy Spirit, and that's what gave him the strength to do it. That's just a powerful, powerful thing. But do you notice something about this verse that I read? They're praying for boldness. Mm -hmm. They're not praying for deliverance. Ooh. Nope. Nope. They're certainly not. Someone write that of on their a tweet. Attacks. Someone write that on a tweet. That's a good tweet. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Say that one more time. They're praying for boldness, not for their own deliverance. Mm, yeah. They're just praying for strength. Lord, give me the strength and give me the boldness to do what you asked me to do. Yeah. You know, it would have been so easy. I would probably have been praying, Lord, please keep these here. men away from me. <laughs> you know, please, I don't want to go back to jail. Just keep me out. But they were praying for boldness. And what happens? The building starts to shake. Mm. And I think they, they realized, you know, praying for that boldness, what they were prepared to lose or sacrifice themselves mm. in order to get uh, Christ's message out. Amen. Amen. 
But I think and you see you see a pattern developing in mm -hmm. in the story because as you know we're going to get eventually to Paul and Silas in the in the jail mm -hmm. in the prison. What are they doing at midnight? It's, they're singing. They're terrible. Singing. They're singing praises mm -hmm. and they're praising God. You know, and the and the place shakes. An earthquake takes place and and their fetters oh, yeah. are broken and they're all really really they're ready to go free. So, you know, Pastor, we no. did that little no, thing. No, for I, I don't know, preach it to you because I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying <laughs> no, this. No, I mean, we did. We got the, the kids. We got the, the acted out there at the at the at the yeah. academy. So yeah, it was so much fun. It, but you can see, I mean, even in a difficult position like that, there was, it must have been awful painful. These stocks that they placed their feet in, mm -hmm. you know, they, and they actually had to pull themselves up to ease some of the pain on it, mm -hmm. you know. And yet here they were praising God, and that's what that's what got the rest of the uh, uh, inmates. They didn't take off. They, they didn't leave, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, the jailer came in and he saw that the prison, you know, the walls had broken down, whatever, and the, the jailer thought that they were all escaped. And so mm -hmm. he's getting ready to take his life because he knew that that's what they're going to do. You know, a jailer lets the, the prisoner escape, right. you know, the, the emperor will have his head or whatever. So, and Paul says, don't fear, we're all here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the jailer says, they're all here, can't believe it, you know. Why didn't they leave? Why didn't the other inmates leave? It's because of what Paul and Silas were singing praise they were singing praise to God in the most uncomfortable place in the whole prison and they they want to know who this God was <laughs> who was praise praise them. yeah and their testimony yeah. their testimony spoke louder than the situation amazing. I mean it's still that thunder no thing. that's okay we'll there, oh. but you can see the pattern yeah you know, oh, from yeah. Uh, my gosh we're, we're actually I mean <laughs> we have to wrap up I mean and but uh -huh. I want to I want us to finish with just seeing because because they they came together they pray they held fast to scripture and held fast to his promises and as they did that, they, instead of praying for deliverance, I think that's a great point. They prayed for boldness. Yeah. Because God, I know that what you've called me to do, it, it's not done yet. And despite what I've faced, I will trust you. Though you slay me, <coughs> I will trust you. But I love the next the next aspect of the story. You know, when God is working through you, fruits will produce. Yes. yes they will. Mm. And notice, let's read here, verse thirty-two. What Adrian said. Yep. Fruit, fruit, fruits will produce. Now the entire group of those who believed were with one mind, one, one heart and one mind. Mm. And no one claimed that any of his possession was his own, but instead held everything in common. Notice the selflessness that will produce when true love is revealed. Yeah. Mm. With great power, the apostles were giving, testi giving testimonies to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was on all of them. For there was not a needy person among them. Mm. Because all those who owned lands or houses sold them, brought the pr proceeds of what was sold, and laid them at the apostles' feet. This was this distributed to each person as any needed. <coughs> this, no problem, no problem, it's nice. I think it went down the wrong pipe. Yep, don't worry about it. But this is it. As we do all these things, I'm telling you, we will see the fruits of, our, of the Spirit truly come out of us. And so I, I thank you guys for joining us tonight. And I Can I just share something? Go ahead, quick. girl. Do what your thing is nice. <clears throat> you know, we're, <clears throat> we're concerned about what other people see in us when we're going through hardships. <clears throat> it's okay. It's okay. Just let it out. Just cry. <coughs> just cry. I have, <clears throat> but I think that when we trust in ourselves, we forget that we, we walk with him. And that he truly will take over mm -hmm. in those instances yeah. when we're they're too hard for us or they're too difficult. I know these two sisters <clears throat> and their dad um, had remarried and he had a fatal heart attack and he was taken to the emergency room and we went with the two sisters that I've known since they were little girls. And his new wife and her family were there and they you know we knew that he was going to pass away mm -hmm. but the difference in the countenance between the two sets the two parties here are these two young ladies that are losing their father mm -hmm. to death and then there's this other set of a family that believe differently and when the doctor finally came out and said that he had passed away, the reaction to the two parties was so different. Mm -hmm. These two young ladies, my heart broke for them. They sat there and they cried. Mm -hmm. They had, they were engulfed in a river of tears. They were, 
and no consolation. Mm -hmm. But they sat there quietly. They grabbed onto each other. They hugged each other and they cried. But the other party, they were, there was no comforting them. Nothing, nothing that anyone could say would comfort them. And so these two young ladies, they showed the strength and the courage that Jesus, that they had in Jesus and that Jesus shone, shone through them at that moment. Others could see his beauty mm. in them mm. and the hope that they have of a resurrection. Mm. And so we were hard on ourselves um, when we think, but, it, but it's because we think that we are, are able to do it or we're not able to do it. But when we let God, God shines through us in those yeah. difficult moments. As long as we continuously walk with him and pray yes. and ask for his help and his courage and his strength, then during those difficult moments, others will be able to see the difference in those that hold on to him and believe that he is the creator and he is the savior. Of heaven. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I want to, as, as we kind of talked about this, and I love this, <clears throat> love how like they had a companionship and over there we we've, we've been challenging our members at prayer meeting to find a person that you can text to encourage and to let them know you're praying for and so for the people who are online um i know various of you have different friends <clears throat> i want you to pray this is my challenge for you this is my altar call as a pastor as your pastor on facebook and if you're a part of our church if not guess what we we're here for you always amen but i want to encourage you to find somebody that and text them once a day uh, a verse of encouragement and also let them know that you're praying for them but if you text them make time to pray for them and you know, just find anyone on your contact list it could be someone from work that you haven't spoken to for a while or someone in your family that it seems a little you are a little distant from them but find someone and pray for them and pray for a revival like the apostle prayed for the boldness that the holy spirit would work and that would change their lives and that you can bring them to christ as well Amen. i encourage you to do that once a day until next week and then next week on wednesday if you want i would love to hear your story of maybe how god was able to use you in just a simple text message a facetime or what do android people use oh yeah they don't have facetime so we'll keep going but anything that you we can have use, duo well, whatever it is like we have phone calls yeah. yes yes facetime's where it's at okay. there it is but i'd love to hear your testimonies but let's pray let's close um adrian how about you close this out brother sure. please Father in heaven, thank you again for bringing us uh, together on this Reflect and Revive session, Lord. We, we pray that we um, that this was a blessing to many people watching. We're praying for everyone's prayer requests uh, that were made, Lord. Also, Lord, that we may come boldly to you mm -hmm. and be able to preach your word boldly everywhere we go. Yes. But as wherever we walk, whatever it is that we do, that everything we do reflects your character and the people could see that light in us lord and then they could ask about well, why is it that we are this way in these mm. dis difficult circumstances that are going on in today's society not just in our world but within our own homes within our own uh, problems and things that we have to deal with lord, mm -hmm. that we have the strength to be able to fight these things that you give us the knowledge the wisdom the things to say the patience yes, and the countenance that uh that sister knight said to be able to for others to see lord yes so that, that your word can carry on and the life can get an uptick in its heartbeat and keep on pumping and, and being able to spread like wildfire so that way more people will come uh into your kingdom and onto salvation we thank you for everything god may all honor and praise and glory go to you we pray this in the name of jesus christ our savior Amen. Amen. Thank you again for everyone joining us and blessings. And we'll see you next week for Reflect and Revive on Wednesday at 7 or on Friday, prayer meeting 7 o'clock here at the church. Blessings to you guys. Or Saturday. Or Saturday at 11. Saturday My producer just told me Saturday. Executive. Exec, forgive Executive. me. My love, forgive yeah, me. Right. Xavier, we'll see you guys next week. Blessings, guys. Bye. God bless Love you. you. Bye.